with you, man. Stay out there. God okay. bless you guys too. That's Take tough. care. Welcome on. Merry Christmas. Right on. Man, I feel that. Yeah. A lot of people feel that way. A lot of people. Um, definitely over the last uh, few years of this pandemic, people's attitudes have really changed. Really changed. Uh, 745, Senator Joanne Brown. Good morning. Thank you for joining us. Hi, good morning. How are you? Pretty good. Hi huh? to Jason and Sabrina. Good morning. It's good nice morning. to see you guys. Chris, could I just note something? Yes, Jason. The good, the good senator, away. the good senator was one of five who actually joined us here at the KUM studios yesterday mm -hmm. for Giving Tuesday. Thank you again, Senator. She gave one of the coolest toys. She actually gave the baby shark playset. <laughs> <laughs> we tried to get her to sing the song, but she, but she was, uh, she was, she was heading out at that point. But thank you, Senator. Back of your mind, you know, baby shark. <laughs> it never lives. It lives there. What is that? Rent free, right? Yeah. <laughs> The gift that keeps on giving. Well, you know, another gift that keeps on giving is this poor GM, uh, Roy Respicio. Uh, and this, so, it, I mean, I don't. we haven't had you on since this whole port resolution uh, came out, right? Uh, or did we? No, no, no. No, no, no. So anyway, I guess we'll just kind of start at the beginning. The port came out of this resolution, and we played the clip of the port meeting, and the GM, uh, Roy Respicio, was really, like, hell-bent on getting uh, this resolution um, passed, uh, and it was, and you know, the releases have uh, come out, and the uh, um, report is saying that you received illegal uh, retroactive uh, raises, um, and then you had countered with the release, um, citing a section of the law that says anybody who authorizes uh, these alleged legal acts is actually on the hook for a misdemeanor, and so you kind of flipped it on them and said, hey, so that means your chairman, uh, Frank Santos, and uh, board member Nathan Timinglow are actually the ones who are going to be the target of this uh, misdemeanor. I think you call it a witch hunt, right? And then the port kind of shot back with a couple releases that uh, I think there was a release from the chairman, uh, Frank uh, Santos. Did you see that one, Senator? I, I, I certainly heard of that, uh, you know, the, another release. They're very good at press releases. I certainly would like to, to hear Chairman Santos publicly come out himself to the people of Guam and you know, if, th if those are actually statements he's made, then I, I would certainly, I'm sure we'd all like to hear it. I'm, I'm very surprised and, you know, certainly disappointed with the chairman uh, in making those statements when he and his respective responsibility on the board, those those responsibilities lie within his jurisdiction. Uh, you know, so that that that's, I'd like to hear him come out and say that to our people and certainly come out and publicly say that to me as well. Um, this is this is what uh, the press release stated um, as a quote from the board chair that I looked at the past board meeting minutes sent to my recollection. The board only approved a performance evaluation and never approved any retroactive salary pay raises. Now that we are aware that retroactive salary pay raises for unclassified employees are illegal, the only remedy is for Joanne Brown to pay it back. Now that we are told by the Attorney General and the Port Council and the retro that the retroactive raises are illegal, I respect those decisions and supported the resolution in order to recover the illegal payments made to Joanne Brown. As the Board Chairman, I expected that the former General Manager would have followed all the laws and rules and regulations as her former boss. I am deeply disappointed in her response. And that, that was the press release that was sent late. Uh, in the afternoon well, you know, and that's really, really unfortunate because of my six years at the Port Authority of Guam, you know, Frank Santos was my chairman. Uh, and the chairman, you know, not even so much as an inquiry to me with regards to this or even determining himself to find out for himself exactly what transpired. You know, as an employee, certainly I, I fulfilled my obligations and my responsibilities as the Port General Manager much to the praise and consideration in my employee evaluations that the chairman conducted with me on an annual basis and that he signed. Uh, I do not have the authority to give myself anything with regards to my compensation. That responsibility and authority and the signatory authority rests with the board and the board chairman in particular. So, you know, I, I for him to come back and say that, and, and you know, that's something you have to ask to him directly. Because when you, you he authorizes uh, my performance evaluation, you know, that's a self-actuating process with regards to how uh, our increments are, are processed through the HR system. 
that is not something that I have the authority to do. I'm sure also in your respective cases, unless maybe you own your own company and you're in charge of it, uh, you have a boss or a supervisor that certainly would be the one to do that. I don't have the authority to do that. And certainly uh, Rory and his regime at the port are trying to paint this picture that somehow that, you know, Joanne Brown was doing her own increments and paying herself. Oh, let's look over here at what Joanne Brown was doing and wrap himself around with the OPA uh, audit and say, oh, look what Joanne Brown's doing. But keep in mind, Roy Respicio from the very first board meeting that he came in at the beginning of this administration in January of 2019, prioritized, wanted the very issue of the Port 7 put on the board agenda. He pretty much has laid and paved the way for these payments, significant payments and millions of dollars of ratepayer funds to settle cases that were going through the judicial process of many years of preparation, legal review and legal work to go through the legal process, the process that was set up to address these type of issues. Uh, and instead, what did this board do? This board essentially what is trying to wash away the, the review of the Civil Service Commission, even more so the review of the court system and paid millions of dollars of settlement agreements to these very individuals. Rory Respicio, who without board authorization when he first came in claims publicly, oh, I just happened to be running into the principal of YTK at church and all of a sudden he's ready to sit at the table and negotiate settlements of a case that was you know, we and the rest of the public were awaiting a decision that was already argued in the Supreme Court of Guam the summer before. And we were waiting for that decision, wanting to interject. His actions have been doing nothing but paying out public money. So that's the same Rory Respicio that we're talking about. And he's concerned about my compensation when this very same general manager who started at the high end of salary compensation, 164 plus thousand dollars that he never worked for. I spent six years working at that port to do the work that I needed to do and also much to the praise of the board and the chairman in terms of my performance as the general manager of Guam. Every day doing my job, going to work and doing my job, being hands on and making sure that we address the implementation of the upgrades and the $50 million DOD projects and the upgrades and improvements to the physical infrastructure addressing the finances of the port so that before we left for the first time in the history of the Port Authority of Guam, we were able to go and get a bond, a $72 million bond to address needed upgrades to physical infrastructure there that had, been not, had not been taken care of for years. I had the privilege and the opportunity to oversee the most significant rebuilding of the port since it was built in the 1960s. So to come back at this point, Rory Respicio, who never lifted a finger to start at the very high end of the salary and come back now and try to try to diminish my work and my accomplishments and take credit for work that he himself has not done. I mean, you know, that that's really unfortunate that that's what he's chosen to do. But let's look at the realities of what has transacted here. And with regards to these very same questions, I hope that he asked the chairman those questions. And I hope that he has Nathan Timinglow, who was also serving in the board the last couple of years that I was there. Uh, these questions before, oh, let's go and pursue this money because I, I don't know, did you get that press release? Because they're very good at press releases. Did you get that press release from them that, you know, the OPA had found that the first uh, payouts to the, one of the Port 7 members, Mr. Jojo Guevara, I mean, the very same OPA reports that he wants to shroud himself and cover himself in with regards to accusations against me. Uh, did he send that press release out that they were prioritizing the findings of the OPA that Mr. Guevara received a hundred plus thousand dollars beyond what he should have been compensated? So, you know, let's talk about credibility and priority of Mr. Rory Respicio, the GM at the port. Let's have that conversation. Well, well, well. Uh, so you call it a witch hunt. The retribution, what are they uh, trying to take you down for? What are they trying to strike back at you for? Well, I, I mean, goodness, look at all, because I, who's speaking out? Chris, I, I, from having been the former general manager, have a very good understanding. I mean, I did not create the situation that the Port 7, you know, put themselves in. That decision was made at a board level with regards to actions that were taken that the board found and determined were improper, illegal, falsification of documents, and a number of things to try to process payment that didn't have proper documentation. That determination was made at the board level. 
I was hired and brought in to clean up a situation that previous manager did not address. Mary Torres was the general manager at the time. She did not address these concerns, I assume, to the satisfaction of the board because that led to her eventual termination as a general manager. So I was brought in to address these very issues. I mean, I even ran again. I never ever planned on running again for the Guam legislature, being in a public capacity. But I ran specifically because I was concerned about these type of practices of corruption that are happening in our government, the corruption that I've seen happen at the Port Authority. So I'm sure they want to try and discredit me and the work that I'm doing because they want to distract from what they've been doing, what Rory Respicio and the Rory regime down there at the port has been doing, taking advantage and abusing public resources, in some cases abusing employees at the Port Authority. He wants to distract from that reality because, you know, I, let's see what happens, Chris, when when uh, the public auditor, you know, because I'm sure we're all awaiting, he did announce publicly a few weeks ago that we'll soon see the audit report on the remaining payouts of the Port 7. Let's see what his explanation is because his first explanation, oh, we, we don't agree with the OPA findings. But in my particular case, oh, Joanne Brown, let's let's go look at your, oh, let's get, we have to get this resolution right away because we have to address the integrity of the port. Because look at these illegal payments the former general manager at the Port Authority received. I don't have the ability, Chris, to give myself pay raises, increments. I don't even have the ability to trigger authorization for my salary. That's done above me. In that particular case, yes, I'm the general manager to the port, but I'm directly the employee of the board the board of directors at the Port Authority of Guam. So I don't have the ability to do that. So to try to make it appear that somehow, oh, Joanne was brought in and look look at what she did. She's trying to pocket, you know, increase her, her salary compensation, the very same salary compensation that he benefited from the very first day he walked in without investing any time or effort in helping build that port. So let's see where the priorities are and who's being upfront and who's being honest with the public and what they're doing. But they, you know, to me, like I said, this is nothing but a rich hunt. This is nothing but retribution because, oh, I'm the target. Even though these decisions were made at a much higher level than my own to include the administrative actions that were taken at the board level with regards to the Port 7. Those cases were going through the court system as they should. So that whatever the ultimate determination was, the people of Guam can have some comfort that there was proper review of what actions were taken, especially when it involved misuse and abuse of the Port Authority. But no, we're going to wash all that. We're going to bring in Louis Baza, the chairman of the Civil Service Commission, who sat through so many of these very cases. The next thing you know, on the oh goodness, I mean, I don't even know. It's a twist of a dime. He's all of a sudden hired at the Port Authority of Guam and making public statements that these employees are innocent. Uh, and I, I, you know, I assume being involved in, in doing the settlements for these employees. So where's the credibility there? Where's the ethical uh, responsibility there and the actions that are being taken to try? He was he brought down to try and sanctify, and make it seem that, oh, everything's all proper and in order. And, you know, because of his expertise with the Civil Service Commission, he who sees on a regular basis the abuse that's going on down there. And he knows what's right and wrong with regards to how personnel are supposed to be treated. But does he do anything about it? No, Louis just looks away. So let's talk about what's going on with the real issues there. Because you want to talk about misuse, you want to talk about corruption. You know, they think that they're going to focus this on me and, and, and try and discredit me. I think they're only succeeding in making a brighter light of public interest on what exactly is going on down there at the Port Authority. And certainly for the Board of Directors, that responsibility to oversee, supervise, authorize anything for the general manager rests within their jurisdiction and within their responsibilities. I don't have the authority to do that. My signature does not trigger any of that. So, you know, I, I certainly want to relay that to the public because, uh, you know, they want to make these accusations while they're trying to, you know, you talk about the fox guarding the hen house. These guys are not just the fox guarding the hen house, they're in there massacring the hens that are in the hen house. That's what Rory Respicio and the Rory regime has brought back in bringing these ports seven, reinfecting the port. That's what he succeeded in doing. And, and, and now he wants to say, oh, this is a pride. We got to go after the former general manager because look what she did. These are not through my actions, not through my signature, and definitely not through my authority with regards to any compensation that I receive. And certainly, I, I think, you know, I maintain a pretty consistent track record. I work for what I have. I have no problem showing up to work and doing my job. 
I've always done that. I continue, and I still continue to do that in my respective capacity as a member of the Guam legislature. Uh, Senator, I want to uh, just ask, I, I think, an obvious question, right? Cause, uh, did, did you, in your opinion, receive illegal retroactive uh, raises? Because I know that we're focusing on, and your release, you focused on uh, what the law said, anybody who authorizes uh, these things. But do you feel that you received? You know, that's um, what I need to ask of the board, because as far as I'm concerned in the work that I've done in my capacity, let me say, why don't you ask Rory Vespicio? I believe he was hired around, what, the 7th of January 2019, right? You know, the, the processing of his paperwork and stuff, did that happen on January 7th of 2019? Did they get all his personnel jacket down there and process all his paperwork? Was all that executed and signed on the 7th of January? The odds are fairly good as it is with the rest of the government of Guam. Probably, probably not. <laughs> so did Rory Respicio in receiving his first paycheck, did, did he get retro pay? Stand by. Let's jump over. Uh, good morning on the breeze side. We're KUAM uh, FM here. It's the link brought to you by Pacific Points, Cabo Enterprises, it &E, and Jack in the Box. KUAM TV. Good morning. Here we come. It's 8.02, and good morning, KUAM TV. Wednesday, December 1st, this is the link. Miss a link, miss a lot. And wow, it might be raining cats and galagos outside, <coughs> but it's pretty hot in here. <laughs> uh, with Senator Joanne uh, Brown responding to the reaction, to the reaction, <laughs> to the reaction uh, from the port. Um, I don't even know where we were, Brie. Uh. <laughs> You were asked about the the whether or not I believe you received the retroactive payments, right? Uh, and you said take it to the board and ask the board. So your your uh, deal is that, and you've been consistent in your releases and saying that you don't have the authority to give yourself a raise, that you don't sign off on anything, and that's kind of the picture that. I felt like they were painting with this resolution was that you had, you know, uh, Senator Joanne Brown, she was a poor GM off and, a, you know, signing stuff off um, on your own. And then when you had come out and, and your release and said that um, the law really specifically targets those who authorize uh, these kinds of things, um, we did see that release from uh, the port and Chairman Sansa said he didn't recall, right, if he had signed. Mm -hmm. Well, there's anything. something about Nate, right? That yeah. Nate didn't. And that uh, board member Nathan Timonglo was on the board, but that he didn't sign off on anything. But you know, but even board member, you know, I've, I've not had a lot of engagement, obviously, since I left the Port Authority yeah. with even, you know, the chairman or or with, uh, you know, with uh, Nathan Timonglo. You know, Nathan Timonglo came to my office a few months ago with his boss from the company that he works for, you know, because he was, they were concerned that there was legislation before, you know, before the, before us in the Guam legislature that might, you know, create an unfair advantage uh, between them and and their competing uh, companies, and you know, wanting to emphasize to me how important it was to make sure that there was a you know a fair playing field, and that's the first time I've I've actually spoken to Nate in three years. First time I talked to him since I left the port was when they had their first board meeting, and I was hearing that Rory Vespicio was trying to put this issue of the port seven on his very first board meeting. You know, asking board member Timeyla to please review the issues before he acts on that particular issue. And so I had not met him till he came to visit me at my office a few months ago, asking for fair consideration. And these are board members that I've worked with that I know. Uh, you know, my phone number is exactly the same. It hasn't changed. I think I'm, you know, if you wanted to find me on Guam, you could find me. Not even so much as a phone call to say, Joanne, you know, this issue got raised. Hey, you work with us. Are you aware of it? What's your response on it? No, instead we're motioning on this meeting to take action and the irony you know, I don't even know uh, the board member that raised the concern or, or you know, who recused herself from, from voting. Hey, let's look into this issue a little further. 
So to have those that, you know, that I have staff, that I, I have all the way up to my very last board meeting, public statements of my performance, my performance evaluations for the years that I was there were exceptional, not because I wrote them. They were, they were given to me by the board chairman and for them to now to take this action because the current management who is very clearly from day one, probably even before day one, you know, we're, we're laying the, the paving the way to accommodate, politically accommodate cases that were going through the legal process, paying off millions of dollars of rape. And not just that, it's not just the Port 7, there are other payoffs that they also made of adverse actions in the civil, that were going through the process through the Civil Service Commission and the court system and paid those off too. Where else in the government of Guam has that happened? Where else have you gone back in and reversed decisions or actions taken by previous management and the previous board? All these accommodations, these political accommodations are being made and now they want to target me. You know, I have been in this public life many, many years. This is not the first time, but I continue to tell my truth. I continue to say and do what is the right thing. I've always been responsible with regards to that. I've always been responsible with regards to the tasks that have been given by given to me by my bosses. I did that at Guam EPA. I did that for the time I was at DPW. I certainly did that with my performance at, at the Guam Port Authority. And so certainly for, for this these comments to be made by someone who they themselves, you know, look at their track record and what they've done with regards to the the opportunity that's been given to them at the port who's been doing these payouts who's been trying to erase these cases rather than going through the proper judicial process and then of course because i've raised that concern uh, i'm the target i'm the target well you know what i will continue to do and say what i believe is the right thing because this is my community our families live here we want to make sure that our government and our government officials to include myself are doing responsible things and hey i'm right here you guys, even when I was at the Port Authority, I'm not a director that ever, you know, runs and hides. And if you need to talk to me, you have a question about what's going on, I'm always available. I might not be at that very second because I have an obligation to take care of, but I will always get back to you to address and respond even to the public with regards to, I don't shy away from that. And so, you know, that's all I can do. And that's all I've continued to do all these many now going on 33 years that I've been, you know, in public service to our community. I don't shy away from that. And so when somebody wants to come out and try and attack me and, and try to diminish the work that I did, try to attack my credibility, you know, you got to wonder what, what's Rory's obsession with Joanne Brown in particular. He has had a golden opportunity at that port to take things to the next level, to focus on the proper management and operation of that facility and, and build upon what so many that have come before him have contributed. Because there's a lot of good people that work at the Port Authority, come to work every day and do their job. They don't care about getting involved in the politics, but instead that's not the focus. That focus is, oh, I got to make sure we discredit Joanne. Let's go after Joanne Brown because, oh my goodness, she's, she's, she's saying, oh, we, they believe that by discrediting me, somehow that sanctifies them. And I, I don't see it that way. I mean, like I said, I've, I've always been upfront. I continue to do the work that I do. I've come back into public service because I'm so dissatisfied with the corruption that's going on in our government. And yes, there's a price to pay because those people that are involved and engaged in this, they do it directly. They do it through press releases. They do it through their social media nonsense that they have going on to discredit me. But that's not going to stop me from speaking out and doing what I continue to do is the right thing and continue to do the work that I'm doing for this community that I very much care and love for. Because uh, this is where my family is. This is this is my heritage and this is my home. And I will continue to do that in spite of Rory Respicio and the regime that he has down there at the port that is not working in the right way, not doing what is best for our people down there. He's the general manager that's paid off all this money. And you watch, let's see what happens. Let's see, and I have no idea what's gonna happen with this audit report by the OPA, by the, the, you know, the public auditor BJ Cruz is gonna release, but let, let's see, let's watch, let's hear. I'm sure you'll be getting those press releases. Let's see what they have to say about that because they're very quick to interpret things their way to attack and discredit me. But I stand and I continue to stand by my record. I continue to stand by my performance at the Guam Port Authority and every other job that I've been tasked and also the opportunity that the people of Guam have had, it elected me to public office. Yeah, and that, So I, I, mean, I, I more than that. Well, uh, thank you for coming on, Senator. Yeah. And uh, I think a lot of people 
well, at least that I know, are more concerned about your performance as a senator, right? So um, thanks for coming on, Senator uh, Joanne Brown. Well, it's, it's always good to talk to you. And like I said, uh, three and, and Ooh, uh, if guys, if, <laughs> on a more positive note. Oh, wait, positive. You, have a, you have a positive note in there? Okay, okay. Well. Yes, it was good. You know, we don't get to do it often. We're all, you know, nowadays it's all mm -hmm. through Zoom uh, because of this uh, pandemic. But uh, it's always good to see you guys and talk to you and, and not always have to be, you know, formal. So yeah. uh, good luck. And hey, if I don't talk to you soon, happy holidays. And, and you know, I'm looking forward. I hope next year is a, a good year for our people. I think that's what we all hope for. And no. that's what we're looking for. Talk to us soon, because if, if we don't hear from you, we're going to think some the port got you or something. <laughs> We'll keep send keep out, in send touch. <laughs> Thank you, Senator. <laughs> right. Yeah. Thanks, uh, Senator Brown. Great day. All right. I did. I've asked uh, the poor GM Roy Rusficio to come on a bunch of times, but um, he hasn't really come on since we made a big to do about the hiring of the uh, former DOC uh, corrections officer down there at the port. But it is what it is. The invitation's always there. <laughs> 